am stoked. I like when to I have a few fucking like jobs like now. To I like to meet people Everyone. who can make me laugh. I like having fun. Yes, I like it to laugh. I like having fun to me. Just be cool. What is the reason for this? I don't need this shit. 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 Thought I'd start with a little Mitch McConnell impression. Boom! 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 Let's go! Let's go! Now listen. <laughs> Good morning. I seconds. I think during the countdown, Vic. Uh -huh. During the countdown, I had two thoughts. One was I wanted to do a bit where I start off by not saying anything, uh -huh. and then I say, you know what? I'm not going to say anything because last week I talked some shit on on Sparks. And people jumped down my throat. They kicked me in the ass on the comments. They said, how dare you? So I'm like, I was going to do a whole bit about, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. You don't want to hear what I have to say? That's fine with me. I'll rest my voice. Lord knows I used it last night. Then, now that's at five of the countdown. That's at five. Three of the <laughs> countdown. And before the countdown, I thought, you know what? Let's not get into the Mitch McConnell thing. It's yeah. very dark. It's very disturbing. It's very upsetting. Well, then, don't you think that there's a coincidence? It's, well, not more, it's more uh, of a coincidence that the alien thing came out and then he's freezing he's up. He's clamming up. No, and then at, at two, I go, fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> I'm doing it. Let's go. Uh, but, I mean, basically because he's a, you know. I got up with shots. P.O.S. At the car wash. But, I mean, listen, really, honestly, somebody made this point. I'm not, I'm trying not, not, try, not trying to be ageist here, but somebody online uh, made this, had this question, a rhetorical question. Who here works with an 81-year-old at their job? Oh, hell no. <laughs> like, come on, folks. Let's put these people out to pasture. The poor bastard. <laughs> like, let them lie down. Let them go to some old folks' home. You're blown That's the pretty sad, up. though. Anyway, <laughs> uh... <laughs> We are back, and in that sense, I want to say it is I'm back again. July 27th, 2023, Glendale, California, hot as a hell. And uh, we have no guests today. We have cleared the slate because I just want to be with my Trinity, Doug and Vic. Thanks for coming. And the captain. And by the way, oh, yeah. good morning, Doug. Good, good morning. morning. What's up, everybody? I didn't say. Oh, <laughs> good morning, Vic. What's up, everybody? <laughs> and I wanted to do this. I talked to Vic and Matt. Uh, sorry, Vic and Doug about this. I said, I think we should do. We should have a little salute to the captain, right now. Salute mm -hmm. to the captain, Doug. Anything? Yes. Any? No, no music for well, this. I. Here we go. Here we go. I got it. Salute to the. Because Mr. Carlin, Captain himself has had a tremendous summer of booking guests. I mean, listen, Matt, give us a rundown of who we had on. We had the They Might Be Giants. We had Blake Mills, John Early, uh, Bar Italia. Who am I missing? It's big, uh, big Mark one. Mark Maron. Mark Maron. What's that? Uh, uh, King, King Gizzard. And the King Lizard Gizzard. Wizard. Um, Natasha Legero. Natasha Legero, Moshe Kasher. Uh, it's been wow. uh, jam-packed. The, the stuff behind the scenes, too, he's doing, like, that. Hasn't oh, even just wait yet. for next month. The fall is going to be uh, the fall is going to be lit. <laughs> August will be lit too. We got and then <laughs> yes, and need you think we are slowing down just because Vic and I are rocking out every night? Uh, that's not to be the case. Next week we're uh, next week. Doug's helming the show. That's correct. What do you have any announcements about that? Well, yeah, we can say sure. It's confirmed. Uh, me and Dave England of Jackass fame will be co-hosting the show. And 
we will have a guest. Not confirmed. We're not going to. Oh, yeah. We're not going yeah, to. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know. Okay. We'll just in case it falls through. Then we'll have, Matt, what's next on the agenda? Okay, walk us through the calendar. I did Couple ask for surprises. that chart, but it didn't come together. Oh, we're posting it next okay. time. We got it. All Couple right. of surprises. Couple of surprises. All I can say is. We'll see tonight the stress factory. You are going to be delighted with what we have in the can. Pre-taped fun stuff. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't be happier with where this is headed. Then I think we will have a legitimate off week. Uh, not even. No. We're going to run a best of. That's enough. I mean, well, we'll be on Okay. We're, we're, because people write me, they go, I didn't get a chance to watch the Blake Mills performance. I didn't see this. I, yeah, so much. Give Sorry, I'm the wild I say, I'm gonna, we're going to cure, curate uh, a best of, of the best of the summer. Best of the recent shows. Our favorites. That's the context. Thanks. Yeah. Our favorites. I for one. So we're going to run that, and then before you know it, we'll be back. So join patreon.com slash office hours live uh, to make sure you don't miss any. And then, by the way, if you're a patron, when Vic and I are on the road, you don't think we're going to be jumping online and, and sharing exclusive videos, and, and we're going to try to schedule. We are going to. I shouldn't say try. There is no try. It's my Yoda. <laughs> We are going to do a few, one, if not two, uh, Zoom hangs. So that all that means is it'll be like you're on a Zoom call with me and Vic. It's basically the show. From the bus or backstage or wherever the hell Always we are. Always making content. And I'm going to take a picture of Vic jumping off Niagara Falls. <laughs> in, a, in a barrel. In no a barrel. barrel. No barrel. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a behind the scenes coming out too. For yes. Oh, yeah. This is a much requested video. I don't know. I mean, we can say kind of the deal. It's basically a, a rig rundown, a breakdown, a study of what it is that Doug does when it comes to the jingles, when it comes to the drops, when it comes to everything else. Yep. So we're going to see, we're going to get into the nitty gritty. All right. Uh, and just to quickly say, of course, uh, thank you to everybody, everybody that came out. L.A. was packed last night. It was a small venue, let's be honest. But Matt, has the band sounded better? Never sounded better. And the maybe, mix yeah. was Maybe superb. my favorite show. It was, it was great. So it was lit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, may, I mean, how about me remembering all my words you didn't have for the most issue. 90%? You, you had one mess up and, just, and then you just looked back and said, oh, you know, whatever word was. Yeah. It was, I felt noticed. so at ease. I, was, I could hear myself. The band was, we, we were incorporating new songs into the set that, some that, some that have, you've never heard, some from other records that we haven't played live. And uh, Marron, it was lit. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> the crowd was jumping up and down. We had a, who, if anybody knows who the very kind old man yes, was. Yes, I posted front. this on my Instagram. You can watch it. Uh, there was a kindly old gentleman, almost looked like that that's j southern gentleman. The uh, I was thinking he looked a little like Pat Robertson in the he 80s. He did look like right? Pat did. Robertson. Yeah. Did. Red shirt. You can see it on my Instagram. If we can find him, I want to extend my gratitude yeah. and you give him the a, words to hot piss. A hat. I was not afraid to sing him. No. So uh, make sure you're, you're logged in to your Ticketmaster account or whatever. There he is. Oh, yeah, Who are you? Go play that. He's, he's all by him. He's by the way. He's by himself there. We're really with a lot of people though. He's. With, I mean, you know, people say I don't have anybody to go to the show with. I say, look at him. Yeah, oh, keep it going. Keep it going there. Watch his mouth. There he is. <laughs> Look at that shimmy. He's having so much fun. Yeah, and amazing. so I say, Vic, you know this is like if you don't have somebody to go with, go. You're Just gonna go. you're gonna make friends. Oh, yeah. So uh, Friday nights in uh, Monterey, and then we're off, off and running all around. I showed the kids. The, the route we're doing, and it's just, it's, go, go do it at home. Use your Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever, and look at the route. Look at, look, bring up timheidecker.com slash live. You see, it's a mess. <laughs> Are you guys on foot? <laughs> or? No. Go, we got e-bikes. Hell yeah. Um, splash, splash, all right. I'm in the car wash. Yeah. Let's take a call just to welcome the crowd, and then we'll get into it. We got, let's get after it. That's a great idea. Can't stop. Daniel needs some advice. All right, Daniel. Daniel, my brother, you know I'm going to do it. You are, oh, 
older than me, do you still feel the pain? Oh, this guy again. How's it going, guys? <laughs> Sorry, Tim. He's a great caller. He's a, he's a human drop. I just need some advice. Uh, I'm not feeling very droppy today, guys. Oh. What's the matter? You got lost your painting job because you called your boss the C-word? Is that what happened last time? I didn't lose my painting job, idiot. I've started my own painting company. Look at this house right. I'm painting right now. Beauty. Oh. Yeah. Or what's Thank the advice you. you need? I'm just going through a long-term a long-term breakup from a long-term relationship. Oh. I'm trying and to care about this. Where's the who cares? I'm sorry. Job? How long? No, how that's long, terrible. How long was it? Uh, the relationship was five years and the breakup is going on like a month and a half now. Okay. Why is it going? Why is it taking so long? <laughs> uh, because it's a move out, uh, breakup and, and, and losing the dog and, and cut the dog you know, in half. She's, that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, um, it, it's hard to find a place to live right now yeah. uh, in Portland and everywhere. And I'm going to keep our spot and I'm not in any like, so you kicked her out before I'm going to, I'm not going to kick her out. I'm waiting for her to find a spot and she's okay. having a hard time. Who cheated and on who? I didn't, nobody cheated on anybody. <laughs> All right. He's so <laughs> mad at me. <laughs> nobody cheated on the relationship when it's coarse. Yeah, it's true. Right? It happens. Right. And it's good that you it's, know it's, it now and not in, let's say 20 years from now. Right. Yes, it's all very amicable, and I'm glad that I don't. We didn't have any kids or any marriages. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to hear that, bud. All I can tell you is, uh, you know, it gets better. It hurts. The hurt is real. The pain is real. It's not in your brain. It's physical. It's in your body. It's your body reacting to uh, anxiety and stress, and uh, it's natural. But it gets better. No, you're, my, you're my, you're my dad. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Why don't you go see Tim? Yeah. Go see Tim. Stop live. it! Promotional time is over. Okay? <laughs> I'm trying to kill two birds I, I, with one I stone here. If, I want to see if you guys, uh, uh, the Trinity, have any good breakup songs that you guys enjoy for some heartbreak. Yeah, I do actually. I mean, my, my whole album, uh, uh, what what the broken hearted do, is all breakup songs. Uh, this is my favorite. Shit. You should listen to that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got this one's my favorite. Okay. <laughs> what about this one? Hello, village idiot. <laughs> Jack Jack the idiot dunce. <laughs> Jack Jack the idiot idiot dunce. No, you know what? I, I I appreciate. I knew that you guys would be here for me. Um, I knew that Tim would give me some good advice. Um, and I know what to do. And, and it's just sad. We're not angry at each other, and we're not. There's no resentment and, or anger, and those are usually powerful feelings. So it's just pure sad. Yeah. Um, but it's all it's all for the best, and it's amicable. And here's to the next part of my life. All right, brother. You be good. Okay, and, brother. Uh, get back to painting that house. Don't take in too many fumes. What you get? Uh, put on, put on the Beach a... Boys. The Beach Boys today out. The second half of the Beach Boys today album is. Like all like sad songs, there's some breakup songs and stuff. And no, don't listen to sad songs. Listen to this. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back. All right. Chili's baby back. I want my baby back. Chili's baby back. Oh, there he goes. Oh, yeah, baby. He's got it. Horror movies. All right. Wow. Uh, that was watch a beautiful. Whole show of just him doing that. I would love that. Coming up with new dances. Maybe with his shirt off. I mean, why not? You could ask. Don't um, give him ideas. Speaking of sad, <laughs> speaking so of good. music, speaking of sad, speaking of music, Sinead O'Connor <clears throat> uh, passed away. Um, I kind of wasn't paying attention to her too much. I mean, I, I didn't get to see a documentary, but. Goodbye, old um, friend. <laughs> oh, God. Jeez. <laughs> and. and uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I went on, I went on a little rabbit hole thing with her, uh, cause I of course remember the, uh, SNL, uh, live appearance where she tore, uh, the picture of the Pope. And now I have to, I kind of approach this conversation or topic as let's just assume you don't know any of this shit or you don't have, you have a very cursory remembrance of this, but I remember it very vividly, vividly. 
And so I'll, if you're watching this, go, yeah, we know. We, we know all this. Pretend that you don't. Or understand that I'm talking to people that don't know about this. Young, younger people. Younger people, the millennials, the Zoomers. Um, so I watched, uh, I didn't watch the rip because I, rem I, I, I remember that all too well. And it was... Uh, the rip. <laughs> I mean... It's, it's unbelievably shocking I, and, and brave and dangerous and beautiful, in my opinion, what she did. I, at the time, I'm 13 years old or 12, and uh, I don't, I'm a Catholic. I'm just like, what the hell is this? That's my Pope. Boom. Hey, that's my Pope. That, I was thinking, I got to go to church the next morning. That, <laughs> she reminded me to go to bed. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, looking back, it's like, oh, my God, this was the... What a great thing to do. What a, what a brave thing to do. I mean, she's way ahead of bringing attention to the abuses of the Catholic Church when it comes to actual child, se sexual child abuse, not this manufactured, insane uh, Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh nuttiness right now, right? She's way ahead mm -hmm. of that, way ahead, and takes her up, and it, it brings the question, why the hell? Don't more people do this on that format, on the live format of Saturday Night Live? Come on, people. Let's do it. I demanded that one of the cast members pull down Donald Trump's pants when he was hosting that dis <laughs> disgraceful decision of Lauren Michaels to have uh, Trump host during the campaign season. Um, but then, so that, so that happens. It's a big, it's like, if you're not around during that time, it's a controversy of all controversies. It's all they talked about. It was like... Uh, Hunter Biden times 10, okay? I don't like it. And uh, the next week, she, she is uh, slated to appear at this 30th anniversary uh, concert celebrating the career of Bob Dylan. You know, my, one of my friends. Uh, <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite artists. So they have this big old gala at Madison Square Garden. They've got, you name it's there. Clapton, George Harrison, Tom Petty. Take me out to the ball game. Hey guys, it's Jeremy Renner. <laughs> no, Jeremy Renner wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Sinead O'Connor's book. Now I, get, I can only imagine she was booked before the controversy. Maybe it was less than a week between the two things, but it was very soon after that. She was in the zeitgeist. I think, I would love more information on this. I could think she was must have been booked before the controversy. And they said, let's keep her on. Um, so Chris Christopherson comes out and introduces her gracefully, saying, you know, the, the, welcome to one of the was great singer, great new, new artist. And this Sinead O'Connor, I don't know how old she was at the time, she, in her early, mid-20s or yeah. something, I don't know. She's very young, this is, and she had just had this massive success She's at this place where she could take over music, you know? She's killing it. And she decides to do this, to make a statement about the abuses in the Catholic Church. So she comes out, and the crowd... First, you can watch that. We can put this on, Matt. Because I'm just fascinated by this. Uh, at first, she's about to... Um, listen to that. Does that make you sick, Vic? Yes. It makes me, Dylan it breaks my heart. To this day, it breaks are, my are heart. Are they booing or are they going, woo, 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 woo? And they're going, Bruce. No, Doug, you can hear it. There's about, I would say about 40 to 60% of that audience booing. I know, I'm kidding. I know. But as the Arsenio Hall era, maybe right. they're going, woo, woo. They're booing and they do not stop. And you can hear the band decide, let's start playing the song we're gonna sing. You can hear this happening. And I'm sorry, this is going to give people the chills. And I know it's hot out, so maybe that's a good thing. But And she's taking it. She's taking the fucking beating right now. There's not, she's like, I mean, we know when we see the end of this clip that this is a devastating emotional experience for her, okay? So you, you, she's, holding her, she's holding her ground right now. She's being strong. She's taking it. She's taking, she understands why, to some degree probably. But she tells the band, no, we're not fucking doing that. We're not playing the song. So they're gonna play this song from uh, uh, sl uh, slow, slow Train Coming. Let's look at this though. You know who's in, and I said, and this will be controversial. We are hearing the boos of five to 7,000 future Trump voters right there. <laughs> That's who's in that Those crowd. are boo boomers. Yeah. Out of Dylan, and look, stop. Yeah, what's Bob doing? 
So Chris comes out and he said, they've asked him, they've asked him about this and Chris Christopherson, who I, I love Chris, I mean, I don't know what, what kind of guy he is, but I can tell what kind of guy he is right now by the what he does here. Because apparently somebody off stage goes, go get her off the stage. Now, I don't know if they were saying that because they were worried uh, that it was ruining the night or that they were worried for her safety or whatever, uh, or she was refusing to sing the song. But what, what Chris does is he goes out and he whispers in her ear, don't let the bastards get you down. Be strong, you know? So keep going. And that, she obviously has her in-ear in, so it took her a second to register that. Oh my God. They still wanna play that song. The band is like, come on, I got my charts up. Let's do it. Let's put power through. She goes, no, stop. And she waits. At a Dylan concert, Vic. Where they booed 10 years, 20 years earlier because he put, plugged in a Stratocaster. <laughs> People are fucking hard. Dylan fans are the biggest some, snowflakes yeah. on earth. Yeah. Dopes. New York. Oh, you ripped up the fucking pulp. <laughs> That's my pulp. I got, I got the audio of what Christopherson whispered. Got a lot of podcasts coming this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then, so here's what she does. Now. No, get the fuck you. Why would you do that? That's what Chris said. Oh, th we're moved on from the whisper. The barrier here. is finally and permanently discredited and abandoned. Everywhere is war. Everywhere is war. Until there's no longer first class or second class citizens of any nation. Until the color of a mouse Boo, skin is of no more <clears throat> significance than the color of his eyes, I've got to say war. War! Until the basic human rights yes. are equally guaranteed to all without regard to race, I say war. In that and moment, I'm Doug, saying, she did, she said, I don't know what that song is. Is that one of her songs? That is that like a, a spot? I don't know. It's, uh, uh. Reggae dude, what? Uh, okay, sorry. What's uh, his name? Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Oh. She, in that moment, I mean, she wasn't planning. Maybe she was. Maybe she had that in the back of her mind <laughs> that, like, if this goes sour, I'm going to do this. But that she got that that courage to go, this is my moment to do this. I'm going to express myself. Yeah. I'm going to, wait, like, light years ahead of everybody on this stuff. And then finish this out because she, she says her piece, ironically. Subhuman bondage has been toppled, utterly destroyed. Everywhere is war. How fucking punk is this? I don't like punk music. <laughs> Wait, oh, that's it? No, there's another. There's a longer clip. Oh, here he is. This it is the. That's all I got. No. Wait, who's this though? You got to watch the it's full the thing that I sent oh, because because yeah. Chris gives her a big hug. Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, we, we can make you that. Are not we'll watch the hug in the second half of the show. <laughs> but, and you raise a good point, though, Vic. What What is uh, Bob doing? That's Bob's Paul. Bob's backstage. Yeah, hopping out before. What's Chris? all the hubbub up there? <laughs> What's all the hubbub? What's, what, it, what, Bruce here? I told you don't book Springsteen. I don't want him to pull focus. And what was it? Wasn't it? It was like the 30th anniversary of him signing a contract. Yeah, it was the 30th it was? Like, anniversary of his. Why? And if you want to see, th that's the best part of that night. Here's the hug if you want. Okay, I do want to see the hug. Look at him. Oh my God, there does that break is. you? Look at this. And she's she's fully, you know. She gonna puke? Up. Well, she's very she's very devastated oh, by the yeah. moment. And look at him. Oh my God. How beautiful is that? And apparently they stayed friends, and uh, you know he he really cared about her after that. So oh. I don't know—is Chris Christopherson still alive? He's, yeah, he's yeah. still acting, isn't he? He's still touring. And I like that. I don't know his music. Well, he wrote uh, "Me and Bobby McGee." That's the only one I think I know. I actually just saw him in a in a movie that was a blind spot for me. I never saw uh, Scorsese's 
I guess, second film, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Oh, yeah. You ever see that movie, Matt? No. It's on Criterion right now. It's great. Of course. <laughs> of course it is. But it's funny because it's this, you know, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore is a story about this woman divorced uh, with a kid and they're trying to make it. She gets a job at a diner and is trying to like become a singer, but she kind of has to like take care of her kid. And it's a, it's a sweet movie, but it's Scorsese. So he's still, he's already got his moves. He's got his like swish truck shots, you know, like kind of things. And he's like, it's very dramatic, but it doesn't really fit the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Like if you're watching like, Goodfellas, it makes sense to be like trucking in. Right, some action. And this is like just trucking into her applying for a job. In the kitchen. But the other crazy thing about that is Alice Doesn't Live Here spawned the probably very mediocre sitcom Alice. Shut up. Yeah. Oh. So you watch this movie. Wait, what? Second half of the movie. Now, again, people might is be at home going she's like, duh. working at the diner? Yeah, with Mel. Right. And Flo. And that guy? Yeah, Mel. That's Mel. Okay. Kiss My Grits. <laughs> but in the second half of this movie she gets a job at Mel's diner it's Vic Tabak the Mel who played the guy you know the white hat on and the white shirt you can see a picture of him but you'll immediately remember that shit and it's the whole somebody at one of these studios sees Alice doesn't live here anymore hey that's gonna make a good sitcom that's develop it's very weird that it happened but Chris Christopherson's in that movie is very good all right City of the day. Anyways, <laughs> peace and love to Sinead O'Connor and her family. I think she's an absolute legend, a true hero for what she did. No, no kidding. Uh, all kidding aside. Do we agree? Consensus from the Trinity. Agreed. I agree. I agree. Nothing compares to. Give me her, a picture man. of the fucking Pope already. I'll r rip that. I'll <laughs> fucking wipe my ass with a it. Printer or something. <laughs> the current pope or the... No, the oh, current pope's okay. Get them all together. The current pope's okay. Photoshop them all. Wait, didn't the cool pope quit? Oh, yeah, the one people love. Who's the pope now? No, current know. pope is uh, from Argentina. What's his name? Pope... Uh... Jorge Mario Bergoglio. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's not his name. Pope Francis. Pope Francis. <laughs> This is his real name. I'm the, more the of a Nazi. John Paul II guy. That's JPT, JP2. <laughs> That's who got That's ripped. That's who got ripped, yeah. <laughs> he got ripped a new a hole. Here's your, here's your current Pope. There he is. Oh my that God. That looks fun. <laughs> you want to watch a good movie? I believe it was on Netflix The Two Popes with Anthony uh, Hopkins and Jonathan Price. Not on. That is one of my favorites of the past several years. So good. One, two. I watched you? Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer? <laughs> yeah. Are you saying Oppenheimer or yes. Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer? I said Oppenheimer. You enjoy it? You watch all of, you're all interrupting, hours of it? You're interrupting your own ad. I know. Here. I'm just <laughs> planting a seed because I thought you wanted to talk about that later. Oh, yeah. I, we went to, you know, all right, we'll talk about it after <laughs> City of the Day. City of the Day is sponsored by. Oh, shoot. I didn't update it. Book on a Stick. No? Is yeah. that it? Yeah. Are you sick of reading books that are rectangular and unspectacular? And do ebooks make you want to dive face first into a porcupine hamper? Well, now there's Book on a Stick, the breathtaking new way to read a book. Book on a Stick books are round, which is unique, and the paper they use is nice and heavy so it won't flutter, flap, or flop. Plus, you only need one hand to hold it so you can flip a page with a flick of the wrist. Use your free hand to hug a pug, lug a mug, or plug a spud. Choose from up to seven books from five different authors. <laughs> Join the tens of satisfied. <laughs> Join the tens of satisfied customers today and get a book on a stick. Available exclusively at Cracker Barrel, Cracker Barrel Express. My name is Tim. <laughs> My name is Tim, and I can't wait to hear this jingle. That's wonderful. Cause I want to. Cause I want to. I don't read. 
All right, Matt Nudson will be supplying the city of the day, but we've got to make it snappy because we have some VIPs on the line. Okay. Also. All right, let's go quick. Hello, Trinity. I love you guys. Uh, Good morning. Tim, Where are you I'm calling my from? Dad to see you tomorrow. Oh, so you're going to Monterey? I'm going to Monterey. Uh, I'm really excited. He doesn't really know much of what's going on, so it'll be a good little. Uh, surprise. I had a son and father. I had a father son situation last night. Uh, I saw them after the show. The gentleman, a, a younger man with his dad, dad older than me, I would say, but uh, d wearing a beautiful uh, pork pie straw hat. Oh, I met those guys. Yeah, he was very. What he he loved wear? the show. Give dad loves. What it. should we wear? Should I get him in some nice? Get him a pork pie hat. Or? Straw straw hat, please, for all dads, please. All dads required to wear straw hats. I Unless you have like, day today like a dads is, of adult sons, not dads who have young young children. Dads of adult sons will be required to wear a straw pork pie hat at the Tim 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 Tim, Tim shows. I'll try to pull that off. I might be able to do that. He's yeah. He's go down to Gorin man. Brothers. <laughs> and a corn cob pipe. No. All right. How See, anything today, else I can do for you today? Because we've got a lot to get to. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say, I have two free tickets to anybody who wants to hit me up um, to the San Luis Obispo show. Can't pull that one off. So you're uh, going to Monterey, but you yes. bought tickets for San Luis Obispo as well? Yeah, I live in Santa Cruz, um, and basically I thought we were going to make a weekend trip out of going to San Luis Obispo, but it's not going to work out. Okay. Um, so. Well, two free tickets. Two. Hey, Shay. Two. two free tickets. I got I to gotta watch my voice. Somebody hit me up. Voice. I'll uh, email them to you, QR code style or whatever. We'll okay. Be all good. Anybody listening within the San Luis Obispo uh, geographic location can contact, uh, I don't know, Office Hours Live. Thank you. Heck yeah. Thank you for the offer. Pokemon! Thank you very much, guys. You guys are the best. Love you. Love you. See you soon. Yeah. All right. Now, apparently, we have some VIP guests in the waiting room. Yes. Our old pals, Jay Weingarten. And Matthew Golden, I believe, is here too with him. Jay, are you there? Jay and Matthew? Hello. Yes, uh, it is Jay. Hey, Jay. Hey, everybody. Thank What's you so happening, much for man? having me. Yeah, this is awesome. And then, actually, I have two other special guests joining me. And uh, they're Pierce Campion and Brian Fittiment. All right. Hi. So, Hello, hi, officers, community. Hi, Timmy. How are you? Hey, good hi, everyone. to see you. Uh, uh, friends of Jay, or how do we know you? Yes. We're uh, all friends. friends of Jay. And used to play volleyball actually, with Doug. I know Pierce. Mm -hmm. And I know Vic from Bethlehem. Yeah, yes. How's it going, Pierce? All right. Well, really? we could have uh, done this as a private chat, I suppose, <laughs> but we are broadcasting live. I was in the New York audience. Times one time. Pierce, where were you an intern? I was an intern at Absa. Oh, who, oh, oh, really? You were an in intern for my company. Was I around those days and during those days? I caught a glimpse of you once or twice. <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, great. Well, anything else, Jay? Yeah, no. I just want to say thank you so much for having us on the show. Um, Pleasure to be on the show. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Um, we're actually going on tour in a, a few days. And I want, we wanted to talk to you about something that we're concerned about. Um, ticket sales right now are not going swimmingly for right. us. It's a tough At, time. Um, so well, as, as you mentioned, uh, you know, no one really knows Pierce or I. I think that might be slightly affecting ticket sales is that people don't uh, know us at all. Uh, don't give a fuck about us, to be honest. What do you guys do? Are you comedians? Well, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm a fan, yeah. <laughs> all right. And yeah, I think one of the concerns we have is, um, and why we wanted to discuss something with you, is um, what's challenging for us. I mean, let's be honest, like our comedy is weird. Uh -huh. And um, we, and I think, yeah, we're, we're all inspired by you heavily, you know, um, uh, by this is weird. weird, you and other weirdos. Like, Remember my uh, note about Zoom, uh, drops during oh, Zoom. Sorry. Thank you. This shit is weird. We're, yeah, we're inspired by you, um, you know, guys like Paul F. Tompkins, uh, Bo Burnham. Uh, Nick Schwartz for 10 times. Uh-huh. And Martin. the old shows that you used to do on Adult Swim, like 12 Ounce Mouse. Yeah, Assy McGee. It was oh, yeah, fan. we didn't have anything to do with those shows. Those was, there was, were just on Adult Swim, but that's cool. I'm a big fan of those shows Space as well. Space Ghost. Yeah. Nothing to do with me. Gruel. Fat guy stuck in internet. Nope. 
Well, that's okay. Well, all uh, these shows. What, what, the what's shows that you disown? Oh yeah, I get it. Uh, some people call me the father of uh, modern comedy, but um, <laughs> how can so I help? You, you're kind of responsible for the low ticket sales in a way, right? Because the you know we we take inspiration from you, and the fact that our ticket sales aren't selling well, it kind of speaks to how you know you you haven't really you know you're got, you're on the picket line and everything, but you're not really advocating for for your for your acolytes. Oh, he's on the picket line, not the <laughs> ticket line. No. Well, uh, well, I, I mean, just to push back a little bit, respectfully, I'm inviting you, uh, in, you on the show here to promote the tour. So I don't know what, exactly how much more I can do. I mean, that's pretty literal. So the collision insurance for comedy tour visa two one four three. We got we got another big problem. Well, I, I'm trying to learn how to drive on tour. Oh. Um, so we we got a above 90% chance of me messing it up in some way because the highway does make me scared. Oh yeah, we'll get somebody $90 else. dollars for collision insurance. Can you believe that? Well, I would just I would just suggest if you have uh, there's you and uh, Matthew Golden and uh, uh, I mean Jay and then the two of you. I just have somebody else take the wheel. That's okay. I would learn to drive at a different time. I just feel like part of the tour, part of traveling is is like, you know, really feeling the wind in your hair and maybe even like having a groupie in the passenger seat. No, that's like no, that's not what it's about. That let me t- I can all, assure we're you. We're single. We're really looking forward to the groupies, you know. Uh yeah, I don't you're not there I wouldn't put focus on that. I would uh, if you meet some nice person, you get along and there, there's a physical attraction that's consensual and it feels appropriate. Of course, I don't, I'm not saying anybody should go out there and act like they're uh, Pope Francis, you know what I mean? But uh, have fun, have a good time. But I don't think the point of touring or the point of performing live, doing what you consider important to you, the art of comedy, should be about groupies or anything like that. I think that's a myopic view. Don't you and guys have girlfriends? Single and Pierce? Ready to start Jay? Mingling. Yeah, we're, we're, I think all three of us are in a committed relationship, but we- You got uh, me there. It is just a rare opportunity, and I think our partners understand that. We no, I don't. I, don't I doubt they do. About it. Have you talked to them about it? No, not not explicitly. And they don't. I think it's a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. <laughs> well, <laughs> let, let me push back on that because it's not a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Hopefully, hopefully, this will be the start of you doing this as a career. So, don't look at this as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The good, you know. Best case scenario, you go back out and keep touring and, and have a great and great success. But. Yeah, we definitely didn't, we're not feeling good about that though, just based on just crunching the numbers. Uh-huh. So, okay. That's, well, what we can do is good. again say, uh, how do people find the tour? Is that the QR code I'm seeing here? We have two QR yeah. codes. One is for the collision insurance. Which well, don't, don't, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which one's which? Don't. Yeah, the I other would... one is for the tickets. The other one's just a normal. So I've got the go the uh, the Q, the collision insurance QR code again. We could really use that just so we can have some more fun on tour because I don't know what you're talking about. I do want to learn how to drive. I'm not listening to you on that, unfortunately. This okay. for, for the tickets. This oh, is God. for we've got Pittsburgh. <laughs> this hour. Tickets we've got Pittsburgh right here. Detroit. <laughs> we've got Boston. <laughs> a little bit All right. Well, crazy. listen. It's a lot of people. Good right now. I, I know a lot of people listen to the show. Is there a verbal way you can express how to get tickets? Where I mean, how do people find? I don't think. People understand. There's a link tree. There's a link tree, and I, the way it's expressed would be linktr.e uh-huh. slash traveling with humor. Traveling right. with humor. Okay. Great. The name of our- well, yeah, uh, we uh, what kind of funny. what size venues are you playing? I mean, how many people? How many tickets are would you are you hoping to sell at a, a, any particular venue? Jay. Jay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not. It, as I said, it's not selling quite like hotcakes necessarily, but um, yeah, we're hoping to sell at that's least. Not the, that's not the question. Yeah, like what is the room size of one of the places you're playing? Uh, room size is about 100 to 200 people. So okay. we would love to get that number in each of these cities. These On are average, where do you think tickets are areas. right now? Uh, Depends on the city, yeah. you know. Yeah, New York, we're looking Theater at places, uh, you know, um, Maybe more in the above thirty range. Okay. Different yeah. cities. Well, these a lot of these. It seems like this kind of show. Five. It seems like this kind of show that you're doing is a, is going to be a, there's going to be a strong walk up potential, as they say. That means people aren't buying tickets in advance. They assume that they're that it's it's not going to sell out, so they'll go the night of. 
It would Listen, be great also, if in Detroit and Pittsburgh could hang up posters for us. That's, if they really, I would talk if to the promoter, but I would reach out to the promoter and ask for that. But listen, I when it's closed by saying this, you got to start somewhere. And if this is your first kind of big tour, uh, it, you might not have. This is not the Beatles landing at, at the JFK situation. This is a band or an artist or a comedian working themselves up from the bottom. So you get 30 people in New York. Yeah, I got it. We see Woke it. Up. Uh, you records. just uh, head to, uh, you know, you, those 30 people are going to tell their friends, so the next time you come back, you get 60, and then you get 90, and then it grows exponentially. All right? Jay, anything else? Okay, yeah, no, we just really wanted to yeah. kind of pick your brain about that issue. Um, but, yeah, Why? I think you covered it thoroughly. Thank you. Right, Thank and you one more much. piece of advice. Uh, as, a com as comedians, if you're going to uh, do promo for your tour... Uh, do radio or TV or, you know, appear on podcasts and stuff. I wouldn't focus on the negative. I would try to bring what's funny about you to the interview, right? Yeah, so, we also don't know each other very well, so I'm, I'm nervous about, you know, just the chemistry kind of falling apart. After uh, a while. Um, again, <laughs> to, to, again, to point out what my point, you're making my point, yeah. is don't focus in the interview that we're doing here. Don't focus so much right. on the negative. Don't bring up the things that are worrying you. Bring up. And Matthew is in the ear, so I'm also like. We're kind of worried about Matthew. Yeah, uh, yeah. Again, you're not listening. If you want, if you see me as a inspiration, please take my advice. I rec uh, you don't have to, but it's, it's suggested you do. This this is what Matthew sent to us. Like, can you imagine getting this from Vic or Doug on the day of? Okay, it's uh, upside down. It's backwards. It says, guys, read. I'm sorry, but There's I nothing don't. Nothing I can do about that. What does he say there, Last guys? Minute. I'm sorry, but I don't think I can make it at all to the call today. I think you can use your. Uh, Keen, keen wit. wit without me? Apparently not. I have to uh, say, I have to be, I have to be a little rude here. I have to say, uh, you, my advice. One more time. Stop interrupting me. God is please <laughs> use the opportunity to do press, speak about your tour, to show the best side of you guys. And what you've been doing is demonstrate fear and weakness, and also have not been uh, showing your humor, showing the, the talents that you must have if you want to do this. So. Uh, Jay, that's my advice, and uh, other two gentlemen, some intern and some other guy. I'm not, I can't remember their names. God bless you, though. Uh, Have a good life. And, <laughs> and go check out Jay and his friends on tour. Uh, I will say, uh, to, in all seriousness, Jay, of course, and Matthew. I don't know these two clowns, but... You, you know Pierce. Bye forever. He makes, he makes really good documentaries. Oh, like, yes. What, the Civil War? You didn't do a Civil War. You did the Civil War? No, the, that's, oh, that's no, Ken that's Burns. Ken, Sorry. Yeah, no. You did a Denny's doc, right? That's Xavier uh, Rotnowski. Um, <laughs> it's been so excellent to talk to you guys. And catch <laughs> you. It's been a pleasure. This, I can't imagine uh, more of a dream meeting than a uh, way to meet you guys. There you go. Check out the Denny's documentary on Vimeo by my friend Xavier. Okay, good. Okay, there it is. Good luck, Jay, and everybody. And <laughs> But Cameron or whatever the hell who it is. Okay, thank it's you. Pierce. Pierce. I, I, he does look familiar now that yeah, you, you know Pierce. Yeah, you know Pierce. It sounds like Pierce. He's Pierce. definitely not yeah. one of my peers. <laughs> <laughs> Jay. Okay, and I it sounded like that. Jay. Final thought it from sounded you, Jay. Like, well, it just sounded like you were about to get to something somewhat positive. I mean, sometimes you use constructive criticism, but then you. Kind of oh yes. Oh uh, well, Matt and I saw your J you and Jay did a show in L.A. at the Elysian Theater, and it was uh, delightfully insane, and I loved it. And Jay, you are just one of my favorite comedians. So, yeah. Um, that's that's pure full stop. Period. Brian Jay and I Weingarten, one of my favorite Jay comedians. See, see us perform. Yeah, and uh, you know, oh, there's a, some opening acts too that you can check out if you get there on time. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, we're we're gonna take your advice and um, try to be funnier with our promo. And yeah, we truly appreciate you having us on. Thank you so Thanks, much man. to all of you. All right. Take care, Jay. Good. Safe travels and don't and have someone drive with experience. I'm worried about you. Um, See you guys. Sounds good. Appreciate it. Bye bye. Anybody okay, on bye the guys. hotline, Matt? I don't think we've been yes. promoting. Okay. We do have the, I believe I believe there's a bone picker on the line. Let's Finally. There. Uh, Jose, Jose on the hotline. Got a bone pick, do you? You're live on the Hello? Air. Hello. Hello. Hey, guys. Um, just wanted to say something real quick. I didn't listen to the second half of the show last week. Or was it last week with Natasha Legero? Yeah. But she mentioned about Frank Zappa inventing yeah. the Wawa pedal. 
and you guys dismissed it. Did you guys ever touch back on that? I didn't. We didn't dismiss I it. I looked we it clar- up. He did not. We clarified it quickly. He I made think Matt a all, version of one or uh, something. Matt immediately uh, well, said that. I didn't, I didn't. I didn't hear that part. But yeah, he, he was the first to record with the Wawa. Okay. Really? Okay. Somebody and had he, to be. And he introduced Jimi Hendrix. He introduced Jimi Hendrix to the Wawa for the first time. Oh, okay. Well, that, that that's something. Let's yes. go. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder how, how that happened. One. You know, like Zappa's like Jimmy. I got this thing Jimmy. you got to see. Go on to do lunch? Or like, how does he that's cool, man. your life? Every, oh, man. Everybody, that's cool. everybody was, showing, like was showing Jimmy new. <laughs> wah, 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 everybody wah. was showing Jimmy new pedals at that time. You know what's funny in the Get Back like documentary? The Excuse me. <laughs> in, the, in the Get Back documentary, George Harrison gets a wah wah pedal. You know about this? And no. the first like week of that recording, <clears throat> it's nothing but wah on everything. <laughs> it's him wahing on everything. And you could tell there must have been a side chat with Paul being like, hey, maybe a little less wah. <laughs> I think it's a little, a little much. Or George said, this isn't working, but everything had wah. And then when you hear the records, yeah. there's none of it. <laughs> Except maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit on Across the Universe or something. Wow, wow, yeah. Then. Hey, Tim, I have a request real quick. Go ahead. Uh, I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, and um, I don't have tickets to your show right now. Explain I that. I really afford it. I was wondering if I could get, oh. I was wondering if I could get on uh, your list for that show. Yes. Well, yes. A plus one. Oh, thank God I'm a country boy. What'd you say? He wants a plus one. Yes, the answer is the yes. I, with my wife. Yes, you can you can what's, get on the What's list. your name and city again, sir? Sweet. It's Jose, and I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. Do you have yeah. a last name? You need a last name. Do you want to? Why don't you message Matt the last oh, name sorry. if you remain He's anonymous? On the hotline, so. Oh. No, it's fine. It's Rosales. R O S A L E S. Well, then right, someone's just going to show up as yeah. early and say, "Yeah, I'm Jose Rosales." Oh, uh, plus shit. two, plus right, one. Now what? They'll and then the real Jose shows up. We got no way, Jose. We got a. Spartacus situation. <laughs> I am Jose. Well, thank you, Tim. All right. Thank you, Tim. You're, uh, you're a sweet guy. I love you. I can't wait to see you next week. Honesty is the best policy. Don't show up saying you're Jose. Son of a bitch. Okay. I mean, you can. They'll say no way, Jose, if you try yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Well, if you want to, cl- like, uh, maybe, um, well, I don't even know what to say because anything I tell it's... you is going to be publicly understood to be the way to get the actual Jose yes. tickets. Oh, give him like a code word. Yeah, but... <laughs> Matt. Well, they usually don't, don't they check the, don't they check your driver's they license? Check That's a good point. Oh, now people got time to make that fake ID. <laughs> it's so, probably cheaper than the tickets. Can you imagine? <laughs> the ID costs name. more than the tickets. Name, so I'm okay with it. All right, buddy. I'll see you in Birmingham. <laughs> What's the temperature out yeah, there in Birmingham you. right now? Naya. One hundred. Ah, oh, come on. One hundred what? One zero zero. So. What was a hundred yesterday? Ready for swamp ass. <laughs> Swamp ass. I'm going to get so much of rash between my thighs. Oh, it's the worst. Is there a word for that? Get some talcum Two, powder. Three, four, right. Tim, where are you playing at that uh, bottle tree theater or whatever? Hell no. Is that what it's called? I don't remember. Tree. Tree. Saturn. <laughs> the Saturn. Saturn. Great venue. One, two, three. That's the backstage yeah. I'm looking toward, looking forward to, Vic. Where do you see this backstage? Mm. It's a whole loft apartment they have. For real? Yeah. Bunk beds and record players and a, oh, games it. and shit. It's Look really nice. A record player in the back. Bunk beds? Yeah, what's with the bunks about? Take a snooze. To, multiple <laughs> band members can snooze. Take a, a nap. Okay. Um, Is it better than the Paps Theater in, in Milwaukee? Bunk? It's on par. On it's actually par. nicer. Okay. I hate to say it. Um, all right, Doug, quickly, Oppenheimer review. Well, it it was, uh, I don't know what, I don't know. <laughs> Look, the first hour was annoying. I was like, what is this movie about? What? It's like watching a trailer for three hours. <laughs> Not wall-to-wall music, Boom. emotional. I mean, that's this thing, right? That's, yeah. the, that's, what that, so, that's what that director does. What kind of music is it? I don't think I've really... It's just scoring. Hans it's just Zimmer. More, okay. It's nonstop score, <clears throat> wall-to-wall, three hours. So that, that's funny. The Red Letter Media guys did a review. They loved it, but they also had that note about the music. Yeah, and it was a lot of more characters than a, like a Robert Altman movie. Every five seconds is like, oh, this is. person, and then that, yeah. and then they're jumping all over the place. But ultimately, I liked it. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, Matt, thoughts? It was a lot. It was a lot. Well, I think isn't I that agree what you with, want? with Matt's dad about it. Isn't that what you want from a movie? 
I do. I, I found it. I, I found it a little confusing. I get confused. Yeah, it's by like confusing. His yes, there's it's a lot a gish of uh, gallop of information. There's a lot. Oh, nice word. There's a lot of overlapping timelines and, and then playing. I get with, kind of exhausted. Yeah. Maybe I'll see it again. I would watch it. You know, my only criticism. Um, I mean, I like it's. I love Christopher Nolan. I love Batman. <laughs> I watch those Dark Knight movies all the time. I loved uh, Dunkirk. Dunkirk I saw twice in the movie theaters. That's a perfect movie. Um, I liked, I watched The Prestige recently again. I seen? love that. Yeah, that's a great I saw movie. that back in the day. So I love him, and I liked this movie a lot. I don't think it's like my favorite Christopher Nolan movie. That I thought... I thought Robert Downey Jr. was fucking great. How I didn't know was, that was ja I didn't know I mean, that was him for like the first hour. How great was it just to see Robert Downey Jr. in a good, great part? I'll tell you, I loved when he was being obsequious to Oppenheimer and mm -hmm. sort of kowtow or you know. Just yeah. Like, but then when it turned, I was like, a little spoiler alert, too bad. Yeah. It was like a little too much. I was like looking for the earpiece in his ear. You know, me and my friends nice. did when we went to the movie. We dressed up. <laughs> we wore the goggles and oh, like nice. the hats and the, uh, all the scenes were in gray and white suit. The nuclear scenes were incredible. Yeah. I, I could have used more nuclear scenes. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to scene. not laugh when you see Albert Einstein come on. Dude, that know? was hilarious it's, when but it's he like, comes what are you behind gonna the do? car. You, you got you to gotta show Al. <laughs> what are you going to do? Are you going to ignore Einstein Al? just walks up like. I didn't think, um, wait, what was my negative? Did I, have, did I say what my negative, my, my problem with it was? Oh, I know what it was. We made an effort. Uh, our, our mutual friend, Alyssa, really wanted to see it. Um, on IMAX and on in 70 millimeter, which is the way it was filmed, the way it was shot. So there's not a, not a lot of those, but the classic man's Chinese theater, now it's TCL Chinese theater, the classic Hollywood Boulevard with the hands and stuff, they have, that's where you can see it that way. So we're like, last week, we're like, let's get tickets for this weekend. Nothing's available, sold out. First thing they have is Monday morning at 10 a.m. We go, okay, that like I'm not doing shit Monday morning. I'm I'm on strike. I'm not working. I got nothing going on. I'm just pr packing for tour. And pr so um, we all go. We get tickets for Sunday uh, Monday morning at 10 a.m. And it Monday. was the coolest thing. It, the the place was sold out. Monday. Right, Matt? Packed. It was packed, and that's a 500 seat theater or something. Monday. I don't know how many seats there are there, but it's a Monday. big theater. Vic, Monday. Monday morning Monday. at 10 a.m. Monday. I'm forced Monday. by law to get a hot dog and peanut M&Ms. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? Wait till noon and then get... get do they like, offer like Did you get the, Bavar the Bavarian legend? <laughs> oh, the Bavarian legend. I know what you're talking yeah. about. It's that big, big pretzel. Yeah. They didn't have that as an offering. But um, so that move, that was impressive. That was cool to see. Carmen but Christopher was there with no shirt on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think it was the. I didn't think the movie. Uh, I didn't think it was one of those. Wait, things did it had bomb? To see it in, did that movie bomb? <laughs> it was a bomb. I don't think it's one of those movies that needed to be seen in IMAX. It was mostly <laughs> people in rooms talking. It was essentially right? yes. a courtroom drama. Yeah, really. and there are. I mean, there's the big bomb, but I mean, who gives a shit? You can see also. That. This is kind of a spoiler, but. The whole drama about him being sort of like losing his clearance, his, clearance, his security clearance, like. So what? I looked him up. It was like he lived. A, he went on to be successfully. It's not like yeah, he was. But his, he was his integrity was exiled was and uh, canceled for the rest of his life or something. A bit trumped up that drama. <laughs> <laughs> Played up for a movie, right? Uh. <laughs> Overall, you got to see it. You got to be part of the, you know, I'm not seeing Barbie, whatever. I'm not I could have used a little more sex scenes. Hey, oh. <laughs> well, I like got that Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh. I love watching just naked there, scientists. Florence Pugh's just sitting around nude in that yeah, movie. That just wild. Just sit, yeah, that's a little, a little gratuitous. Do we but need I was, her I mean, to be sitting around naked? I'm not going to be he? all prudish about it. So was he. Yeah, but you he didn't, didn't see his see dong. No way. No way. In real life, they would do that? I want to see that 70 millimeter. I mean, I think he was a womanizer in real life. Cheated on his wives and Uh, anyway, let's take a call. Maybe somebody else has a distinguished opinion about this. Uh, do, where'd my hair? I do want to tell you. I, I guess my point is, I'm surprised it's the big phenomenon that it is, because I'm watching it like, this is for the masses? Like, this doesn't well, seem Well, like... people want to seem smart, you know? They want to be like, <laughs> oh, I'm very educated. I want to see Oppenheimer this weekend. 
Yeah, so I, I was uh, I'm, I'm going to the museum tomorrow. <laughs> going to the art does museum. Take, yeah. Does it take like political slants oh, like Oliver? Just look it up. Like Oliver, <laughs> Oliver, what's his name? The JFK? Stone? Yeah, Oliver well, Stone. No, it's a, it's about like sort of the... Well, Oppenheimer was very... He, after the bomb dropped, he became very outspoken against... It doesn't even really get into that. Well, it gets he, into his... Com he was like in... He was toying around with the communists... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, at the time, you have to remember that the communists were allies of ours. The USSR was an ally mm -hmm. of ours in the war. And uh, communism didn't have quite the uh, stigma that it had in the, by, you know, during the Cold War. So you had in the 20s and the 30s a lot of union labor, a lot of people organizing and, <laughs> and being... What was that? I, it was an accident, but oh, I got laughed. It worked. Well, whatever. <laughs> hey, you know what? There's lots of ways to get a laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk to Aaron. Aaron, Think Aaron again, is sunshine. Uh, one of my new favorite callers. Aaron always has something nice to say. Take it away, Aaron. Hello. Hope you don't feel pressured. I don't want to interrupt the silence. Hi, everybody. Hello, um, hi. Really looking forward to the tour. <clears throat> um, I have a quick sort of silly baseball question for you, Tim. Great. <clears throat> Are you following the Dodgers this year? I all? am, yes. I've been, I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't dialed quite in early. It was a little hard because there's a bunch of new players. And now I'm uh, watching a lot, most of the games, trying to watch most of the games. What do you think of uh, Kike Hernandez coming back? Oh, exciting. Exciting news. I, lo I love Kike. Who was the other guy? It was Kike and another guy that both got traded at the same time. Who I, They were kind of a duo. Justin Turner, maybe? No, no. He stayed on for years after. The guy that wore the pearls. Oh, jo Jock Schwarzen. Peterson. Oh. Jock Peterson. Uh, I did actually have a question about him and Justin Turner, though, because okay. okay. on the Red Sox this season, they did this, like, celebration thing that nobody else did where they would do, like, a crotch bump. Oh, really? Wow. And I, just, I was just going to ask if that was, like, a Dodgers thing or if that was just something. Well, the there. Dodgers now have a new tradition. Have you seen the new tradition? I don't think I have. They, when they get extra bases, if somebody gets extra bases, Doug, they get to second, they do this. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And everybody does it. The crotch like bump sounds kind of cool though, because if you're, I'm assuming they're wearing jock straps, so it'll like clank, right? A cup. Yeah, a cup. Yeah. You got a cup it's, on. Like, was it metal? Like just the two of them yeah, had they're, <laughs> they're metal and plastic, I think. Uh, but yeah, I guess it sounds like it's not like a typical Dodgers thing. So two nights gross. ago, the Dodgers playing the Blue Jays. They were down seven to four in the bottom of the ninth. They tied it in the ninth with a couple of errors and little small ball moves. Tied it and then won in extra innings. It was very exciting. Thank you for the call. Nobody wants to hear me talk about baseball. Hey, Tim, do you want any pizza? Except you. Well, one person. You love pizza uh, so much. Who else we got? A lot of my hand raisers disappeared. I panicked the other night. I had a little panic attack the other night. I'll tell you why. I, at the last minute uh, on Tuesday, I called into Sharpling Show, the best show, sister podcast of ours, brother podcast. <laughs> and... You can listen to it. It was a very fun, silly chat with Tom. We got, got into a bunch of stuff, one of which I was calling to promote the tour, and I um, uh, had this bit, very quickly wrote this little bit where the band and I were going to learn a new rock opera for every show, Doug. Yeah. So, That'd be I, a lot of work. I, yeah, it'd be a lot of work. It's, <laughs> it's you know, uh, where, where did I, uh, I'll tell you, the you know, we got Tommy, Jesus Christ Superstar, Hair, The Wall, Quadrophenia. Kilroy was here by Styx. <laughs> Fucking Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. These are also concept <laughs> albums. And every night we'd be doing a new one. Lou Reed's Berlin, American Idiot. And uh, the joke, of course, being that that's an idiotic thing to do. And we were sort of under, in the weeds, learning all these songs. And I'm like buried to my eyes in charts. And in the course of that, I said, you know, Vic's not a very good keyboard player. <laughs> and he's very stressed out. And... Uh, and, uh, and then Tom goes on, and t Tom kind of loves goofing on you. Yeah, he does. Uh, he's, like, you're, he's like, you're his uh, big brother or something. <laughs> Noogies and stuff. But he's, v Tom went in on you saying something like, oh, Vic is going to, I can't wait to see Vic on tour again. He's I'm like, yeah, tune into Instagram to watch him fall down some stairs. And, and Tom said, you're going to get COVID four times on the road. And I said, you're going to get double COVID, a new, a new variant. Um, Where does the panic attack come in? Well, I do it, and I, <laughs> yeah. I, and I kind of like when I said Vic wasn't a very good keyboard player. I kind of instantly felt like eh, that wasn't nice to say, but it was in the context of Vic being like, 
buried in yeah. sheet music. Right, you know? right. But there's and a little truth to there's everything. There's a truth to like the fact that yeah. compared to Connor and Ellie and Josh, who are like hardcore session player musicians, you're like me. Like yeah. we can play, we can handle also, it. And piano's not but my You're not a virtuoso. He went to, he went to college. Yeah. I I'm know. A, I'm a guitarist. But anyway, I play so piano like a guitar. Yeah. We have a group oh, chat for the band and everybody, and about 20 minutes after <laughs> the call, Vic texts, "Wow, <laughs> that's it." And then radio. And then, radio and then I, I go, "Oh," I said, "Did you listen to the best show?" Nothing. Wow. And I start, my mind goes crazy. I start oh, thinking, wow. oh no, did Vic, he, was he listening? Because you listen yeah. occasionally. You yeah, listen yeah, to that show. Yeah, of course, I love it. Yeah. And, uh, I, I hadn't listened, actually. And I just, I don't, I don't want to panic, but I'm like, I'm, 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 you know how your brain just goes through all these scenarios that are never going to happen? Oh, he's, he was, he, I, it's, I really hurt his feelings somehow. And he's quitting the tour. He's, qu he's out. That's it. <laughs> he goes, fuck you, you know? I'm like, what? shit. Yeah, why, why are you no warning, like you know? Like, yeah. Why do they want to see a shitty player, you know? Finally <laughs> back, finally lashed out on, at me. Finally, so Everyone always writes. They said, one of these days, Vic is going to jump over that table and <laughs> kill me. But, <laughs> Dump my coffee over your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get slapped <laughs> in the back of the head. But, uh, and then the next morning, I wrote him. said something to the effect of, hey, did you watch something? That, you know, Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I, ladies and gentlemen, gave him a ring. And that wow. freaked me out. Oh, when you see, when, so when you see someone yeah, calling. Like, like, you get like, that yeah, call. You don't want that call. You never want to get a call. You don't want that call. I think someone is dead. Yep. Hey, man, can, I t can you talk for a sec? I'm like, yeah, what? Like, uh, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Text me the headline, then we can talk about it. Right. What right. am I getting into here? Right. So I just said, hey, I just want to make sure we're cool. I was goofing on and you what did you say I don't give a shit and also I didn't hear it and doesn't look doesn't don't matter. ever hear it no <laughs> don't ever listen no it was pretty harmless but yeah. I, for some reason why did you I say just, wow yeah. why did you just text him wow it was, it was in it was in oh, response you, to JP or somebody saying something about the tour that's like wasn't really important to me or whatever I don't know just like yeah. wow just as a joke or whatever so just be first of all lesson <laughs> lesson is you and know, then I went to bed I think is what lesson it was. <laughs> lesson one is uh, don't leave anyone hanging on a text thread if you can. That's try to wrap difficult. things up. Because yeah, because a text thread sometimes it feels like somebody just went like, yeah. just walked away. Oh, I hate when people do that, but I mm -hmm. do it to people you know accidentally or so. I, yeah. I've given people more you know. The benefit Second is you know, uh, to me is try to be more considerate when doing bits. But I felt safe <laughs> doing it. I felt safe. It doesn't. Yeah, it, it didn't, didn't feel bad care. at the time, but then it. I just. It was just my my you know anxiety brain. No, going. but I think I learned something new about you. That's very sweet. Like that you like have these like because you can. Well, that's be what Marilyn. Harsh. Well, that my is, wife said. That's a good sign that right. Tim is not a sociopath. That's, yeah, that's I mean, he has, exactly. exactly. What he's Marilyn got some said. empathy. Exactly. And I told worried. Marilyn about it. She was like, yeah. "That just means that you're a good person because right. you would you you worried about that. You care. Yeah, I worry about that stuff all the time." Right. Like hurting someone's feelings or something. Unless you were worried I was going to quit, and then you'd have to quick find another <laughs> keyboard player, and that would be a pain in the ass to do. Yeah. Like have them learn all the songs. That's the real but, scare. No, I thought, that was, I thought that was really sweet. Should we um, check out Doug's rap and then take a break? Yes. That's a great idea. Um, Doug, you want to set this up in any form? Well, if you if you follow me on Instagram, you know I do these little rap things. How do people follow you on you, Instagram? You call them poems, at Doug Pound with two Gs. And I was in Greece, and I took pictures of, like, buildings that I thought had funny names on them. And I, I did – this is not the remix. You know, you'll probably see the remix next week, but okay. I don't know. Just play it. All right. Well, we'll play it, take a break, be back with the second half of the show. Join patreon.com slash office hours live to make sure you don't miss one second of the office hours live experience. The squirrels are too hot. Take two. If the squirrels are too hot, I'll help them. Cause if I don't, the sun is gonna melt them. When Rosie runs away, Vic is panic stricken. I like the yummy food at Magic Kitchen. You think my beats are too fat? Heck no, Slim. I'm making tracks at the techno gym. Take my squad to court, she'll doubt your case. Cause Judge Judy knows. We bout new base. My fighters are hungry, but they starve hardest. 
when they get a nibble, they head to Barf Market. The copy club gets crippled. And they dribble at my riddles, but they're jealous of my scribbles. And not just a little. My drops are perfect and my vowels are choice. Contrarian nerds sound like a bowel of noise. They think their shit don't stink like cologne colonics. But when they see my new rap, they become a phonaholic. Rap Karens get massacred when they beef with my vernacular. So I call the janitor. When they speak to beach managers. See you tomorrow, pubis. Down on both hands, right side. Oi, 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 can you see your truck? Go to the left side. I shit my pants last night. I shit my pants last night. <laughs> I did. I shit my pants last night. I shit my pants last night. <laughs> I did. I fucking shit my pants. I had a great meal. Just a great fucking meal.